So I chose to share with you a few amazing insights about Moshe Rabenu that uh, hopefully going to refresh our memory about this power. So first of all, we need to remember, we entering into a phase of uh, Shabbat Etzaveh, which is called Shabbat Zachor. And that's the Shabbat actually that is before Purim. And it's the only Shabbat and its only portion in the Torah that the name of Moses doesn't appear. And there is a reason for that. It's all related to the consciousness that we must have when we are about to enter to uh, the holiday of Purim and how we can diminish the forces of Amalek, the forces of doubt, the forces of confusion. So Moshe is actually um, the one that was chosen, that it was a leader that didn't want to take leadership, but he was chosen to. And it's considered to be that he was like the most humble person ever to live. He was the one that actually had the opportunity to connect to the Creator face to face. He's the one that saw the totality of the light of the Divine, he had that merit. And why it's so important? Because it's very relevant to our life today. Moshe was considered to be the Sphira of that, and we know that the generation that was in Egypt that he actually forced, he actually helped to correct, he helped to, to create the Exodus and the giving of the Torah of Mount Sinai, uh, was the generation of the Dor of the Mabul, but they consider what we call Dor Dea, Dor Dea. And the Dor Dea is the generation actually that reincarnate today. We are all part of that Dor Dea. It means that we are here to correct knowledge. We are here to correct personal opinion. These days especially we have a lot of wisdom out there. Some of it is truthful, some of them it's uh, a little bit corrupted, a little bit contaminated with ego. And there is a lot, a lot of information, what we call is available there. But Moses was the one with the truthful information, with truthful knowledge. Therefore, he actually corrected the Sefira of that. So we know that Aman was very, very happy when the lottery fell actually on the month of his anniversary of, of Moses. Because he said, I know that this is a time that uh, the Israel feeling the lack of not having Moses anymore in life. But what they didn't know, he actually born on that day and he died on that day, which is the seventh day of the month of Adar. Uh, so he chose, he chose, a man chose this month knowing that he can, uh, what we call, bring and cause the people to bring the, the dad into exile, into Galut. And it took an advantage when the Israelites at that time were completely disconnected from the light. They were a time of dormant. It's like we, they were pretty much asleep. Pretty much similar to where we are right now. Many people are asleep. They are not really aware of the consequences of what we, we experiencing and what is causing it. That only consciousness can change that reality. So in the portion of the Tzaveh, uh, when we say Shabbat Zachor, what we're supposed to remember, we're supposed to remember that connection that Moses had with the Creator. We're supposed to remember uh, what Amalek, the nation of Amalek, the nation of Balak and Bilam, that created all the uncertainty in the world. Those are the forces that allow eventually Agag and Aman to to continue to rule and destroy the consciousness of humanity. But we know that Moses himself, throughout his life, he had to fight against the nation of Amalek, he had to fight against Balak, he had to fight against Bilam. But they couldn't handle his power, meaning that he must be the conduit for each and every one of us to achieve true certainty in life and to overcome all the confusion that we have of the Galut, that the Dat, this, uh, this uh, Sfira that is in exile. We can remove it. Our purpose really to remove the dad from exile and correct it, connect to true wisdom. So we know that in the portion Tetzaveh, it's all about gathering, 
gathering together the energy of, of what Moses was allowed. It says that in the moment Moses wasn't really mentioned in the Torah, it's only because the Creator decided, He told the Creator, if you're going to destroy the Israelites because they're not ready, because they're not spiritual enough, because they're not really obeying the cosmic laws, I can go with them and I want you to erase me from your book. The commitment and the responsibility, what we call Arvut Adadit, that Moses has. So Moses had such a responsibility for his nation that even though that he knew that they are not ready, he fight from them till almost giving up his life. So what the Creator told him, the gift of this portion, so this Shabbat we have such an amazing gift that each and every one of us can receive a spark, an impregnation, a boo for Moses that help us really to do the job that we're supposed to do, which is the food, which is the a mutual responsibility for helping people in the world. So it says that Moses, other than any other tzaddikim, he actually got the people closer to the Torah, even though they didn't really earn it. So we know Israel didn't earn the Exodus from Egypt. Israel didn't earn receiving the, the, the Torah of Mount Sinai. The, the Israel didn't really earn the, ta the tablets later on, 40 days later, because they made the, the scene of the golden calf. But even though Moses is such a unique soul in verses to Noah that when the Creator told Noah, listen, I'm about to destroy the world, Noah received that and said, okay, I will be their ark. Whoever wants to join in will join in. None of the people join in beside his family. But with Moses, it was completely different. His uniqueness that he fight for humanity regardless of their desire to change their life or to connect to the light. He fight to them no matter what. And he was the one that also allowed the mixed multitude to join the Israelites. Even the Creator told them not. He said, no, 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 no. They have to go to the process of correction. They have to come with us. Of course, it's caused a lot of delays later on, but he knew that he's fighting for each and every soul. So what we have is two important things. One, that Moses is the conduit for each and every one of us to fight Amalek, to fight the forces of doubt, to fight the forces of uncertainty. We receive a spark of him during his anniversary, which is going to happen tomorrow night, and during the portion Shabbat Tetzaveh. That's what Rabbi Chaim ben Atar said, that each and every one of us, because Moses' name is not in that portion, he will be available for us to to receive his spark so we will be able to have this mutual responsibility and thinking how we can help more people even if they don't desire really to have that help and what we need to ask ourselves is how much more mutual responsibility I can take upon more people in my life for sure I'm doing the work I'm doing my connection I'm helping others but the question is can I do it in a wider, more extended way? How much I'm willing to sacrifice like Moses for myself for helping humanity? These are questions that we need to ask during his anniversary in order to connect to his light, in order to expand our ability of influence. That's the only way it says in our generation, the last uh, exile, what we call. The first exile was corrected by Abraham. The second exile was corrected by Isaac. The third exile was corrected by Jacob. The last exile must be corrected only through the energy of Moses, which is inserted into the Torah, which is inserted into the Zohar. Moshe masbir lanu shelebase akoach shel liot manig olami ze adaga lekulam ha'mash nikra arvut adadit. הערבות ההדדית שהייתה למשה, היא הייתה מרגע שהוא קיבל את המשימה מהבורא להוציא את בני ישראל ממצרים, ללוות אותם. מרגע שהוא קיבל את המשימה הזאת, הוא לא ויתר, למרות ש... 
בני ישראל אכזבו את הבורא, חיינה וחיינה עוד ועוד ועוד. משה לא הפסיק. ובאותו רגע שמוש... שהבורא אמר, אוקיי, בוא אני אמחה, אני אמחה את, ה... את העם הזה, ואתה תתחיל ים חדש שיבוא ממך, מהמשפחה שלך. אמר לו, לא, אם אתה... אם אתה מוחה את העם הזה, אתה יכול למחות את שמי מכל הספר שלך. מן, אני לא רוצה להיות חלק מזה. הדאגה שלו הייתה כל כך גדולה שהוא היה מוכן להקריב את עצמו. ואנחנו יודעים שהכוח שלו זה הכוח, הוודאות הטוטאלית. 